or no, 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 no. A, bunch of, a bunch of freaky, weird stranger clowns showing up at your door and just handing you things. That's totally I don't know, dangerous. They're singing no, telegrams. No, no, no. What's the difference? That's. I, have you ever heard uh, about the murder of Marlene Warren? No, Marlene Warren. Who's that? Uh, did this take place somewhere around here? Yeah, actually, this happened in Florida. You what? don't say. Yeah, let me school you. On uh, Saturday, May 26th, in the year 1990, uh, it was Memorial Day weekend uh, in Wellington, Florida, which is considered a quote-unquote village of West Palm Beach County. Uh, it's about three and a half hours southeast. Bougie. Very bougie. Yeah, southeast of bougie? Orlando uh, on the Atlantic coast of Florida. Um there East was, Coast. Yeah, there was a neighborhood there called uh, a very affluent neighborhood called the Aero Club, and it was named that thusly because they had a landing strip directly that split the community in half. That's pretty. What? That's pretty affluent. Uh, yes, uh, the the properties there were known to be over an acre large, and a lot of people had private planes in private hangars on their properties. So this is definitely a very a very rich neighborhood. Uh, It was 10.45 in the morning that day. Uh, So Michael and Marlene Warren, they lived in this neighborhood of uh, Aero Club. They were the successful owners of several businesses and properties, including a car dealership and a car rental agency. Uh, Their net worth at the time in 1990 was well over $1 million. Whoa. Damn. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So for inflation from 1990, what would that be? That'd be like 20... Uh, bitcoins, I guess. I don't Twenty know, bitcoins. With the, the current rate on the market. So uh, bitcoins are worth at least it's a couple billions. million dollars. Like every time that Mario would hit a block, that's like a bitcoin. That's one I bitcoin. That's oh, I didn't like, know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, the correct conversion. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, Marlene, who was then 40 years old at the time, she uh, answered a call at the front door, opening it to find a delivery of flowers and balloons. Um, the delivery person was dressed in full clown regalia. Oh my god. Yeah, they had the whole Bozo the Clown costume, including the white face paint, a red nose, gloves, and they topped off the whole thing with a curly, bright orange wig. That morning, because of the holiday weekend, there was a group of family and friends over at the Warren's house. Um, her son from another marriage, Joey Ahearns, he was 21 years old at the time. Um, he recalls Hearing his mother say, oh, how pretty, quote, she was accepting the flowers and balloons, and which one of them read, there was two balloons, uh, you're the greatest. Then Joey Ahearns, he heard the shot before he realized what had happened. Uh, the clown had silently raised its arm after handing over the packages and pulled out a 38 caliber revolver and fired a single shot directly into the mouth of Marlene Warren. Oh my God. Whoa. The guests rushed to the foyer and to find Marlene collapsed in a pool of blood. Uh, her son, Joey, he ran outside of the door and saw a the, the clown heading towards a white Chrysler LeBaron. Uh, huh. It stopped and turned to, to face him, and he noticed that the clown had brown eyes, and then it turned back around, rushed off to the car, got in, and sped away. Uh, now, suspicion might immediately fall on Michael Warren, as he would stand to gain the most from Marlene's death. And he was the husband? He was the husband at the time. He was not there that morning. Um... Their, their valuable business and properties were both in Marlene's name, but he would be the sole benefactor if she was, were to pass. Uh, so the couple had been also having marital problems for some time, and she had told her mother, stepfather, and son that she wanted to end the marriage and leave him. Uh, she was positive that Michael had been having an affair for some time. She also confessed to her mother that she was beginning to fear her husband. Relayed from Shirley Twing, her mother, quote, If anything happens to me, Mike done it. That's so sad. <sighs> oh, man. Well, th- especially when that much money is involved. You never know what, what people would do. Yeah, for sure. But like that shit, like she was in this abusive relationship and she had this impending notice of her death, probably. She's kind of like trying to warn people, but, but, but at the same time, she can't do anything about it. But Michael Warren, he had a valid alibi for that morning. While the clown was on their doorstep, he was actually en route to a uh, counter racetrack with some friends. He was on, in traffic on I-95. So he's got multiple people. That's a very common cool excuse for South Florida. Mm-hmm. I was in traffic on 95. <laughs> yeah, Couldn't right? have killed her. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have killed her. I was in traffic. But the, uh, the police, they still suspected his involvement somehow with, with the killing. Uh, so the police's other main suspect in the case was Sheila Keen. Keen and her husband, Richard, they ran a car repo business at the time and they had been on the warrants payroll for quite some time Uh, but when she was questioned by the police Sheila said that she was in Boynton Beach um, Riviera Beach and uh, Lake Worth she was searching for cars on the repossessed list there Sheila Keen was also 
the alleged other woman in regards to the Warrens' marriage. Mm. Uh, employees and friends, uh, business associates of the Warrens noted that Sheila and Michael had become extremely close over the past five months and that they would often go to long lunches together. Uh, but about two weeks before the murder, they had been fighting or quarreling and they were not as close as they, they had been. They hadn't been seen as much together. There um, was some, uh, like, uh, there's some drama there. There was some drama going on. This um, seems like a very normal Palm Beach relationship. If you have a property and like assets worth one million dollars and then there's this mistress and at the same time this woman is saying I have a feeling I'm going to be killed and right. if it happened it's my husband then the husband happens to have this alibi. Right. There's something very suspicious going Someone on. Someone don't smell right. Nope. No. So uh, Sheila's neighbors of her apartment, she had actually uh, separated from her husband in January of that year uh, and had moved into a uh, apartment out uh, in the suburbs of West Palm Beach off of Military Trail. The neighbors of hers, they had noted that they had seen Michael Warren so much over at the apartment that they had assumed that they were husband and wife and that he lived there. Hmm. Um, and when uh, asked by the police, Richard Keene, he said that he knew his wife was having an affair and also that she had questioned him the previous month, April, about a missing thirty eight caliber pistol of theirs, which wow. had been of some obscure make. It definitely wasn't a Smith & Wesson, as the uh, ballistics reports from the uh, police files had indicated. Leave it to like some rich, fancy people to shoot someone with like a one-of-a-kind, unique gun well, that can like, easily be traced back. Well, Sheila and Richard were not exactly from uh, an affluent background. Ah, okay. uh, she was 27 in 1990, and she had a reputation for loving money and living sort of a, a free lifestyle. Uh, her husband, Richard, he had been actually a, he was a former KKK leader. Jeez. Oh. Uh, yes. So this is the cream well, of the crop of the South Florida. Wow. They, the, these were the two uh, that had owned the repossession business, and he was actually uh, imprisoned for a while for marijuana trafficking charges in Georgia. Uh, they had had a son together. Uh, this was 1987. Um, so, this is like stand the, up guy. You know, that's Go, but the like golden I said, they had children separated. of Florida. Right, exactly. Right there. Yeah. So, the Our evening best. of Marlene Warren's murder. Uh, police received a phone call from employees of the Dixie Highway costume shop, and they were reporting that they had sold a clown costume to a brown-haired woman two days earlier. Uh, two separate store clerks hesitantly identified Keen as that woman, despite her denials on purchasing that or any other clown costume ever. So this mistress was the suspect who bought a clown costume who also had brunette hair two days before this murder. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. So this comes into the investigation later on when, when there was a report from workers at a uh, Pahokee Auto Parts store. They had tested that Keenan once shown up there in a clown costume and was entertaining children there. The, this was several years before the murder, but it sort of set a precedent for behavior and possible MO. And this all happened very shortly after the murder when they uh, uncovered these facts. And this led to a judge issuing a warrant to collect DNA samples and a search warrant for her apartment. They were searching for hair fibers just so they could match this. Uh, and this will come into later on some of the evidence that they found. Um, because in addition, that, like I said, the uh, police were able to determine that the flower arrangement and the balloons that were delivered to the Warrens' house that morning, they came from a public supermarket. Oh, really? And, yes. Very exclusive to the, to the southeast. And, Hometown uh, pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Publix. Pub subs. Pub subs. Am I right? Oh, all day. Mm -hmm. Pub subs. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite pub sub? Just quickly. Ooh. I get the veggie. It's five bucks. Me too. Yeah. Chicken nuggets or Italian? Oh, mm. chicken nuggets. Oh my Little God, that capicola. sounds amazing. Fried chicken. Chicken tender. Yeah. Chicken I mean, tender. You're going to be a Italian. fat bastard about it. Angela, Italian. Veggie. All day. Veggie for me and mm. you both. Okay. That Continue. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But, and then even more specifically, they realized that only one Publix in Palm County sold these particular balloons that were made of this type of mylar. Uh, and they were found where? That's Off of Military Trail, wow. Wow. less than a mile away across the street from Sheila Keen's apartment. That's very specific. That's very specific. Even the clerk from the supermarket remembered a long brown-haired woman purchasing these items uh, and later what, confirmed that it was Keen the morning of the incident about, quote, a half an hour to 45 minutes before the murder occurred. And that is a quote from Sergeant Bill Williams 
Williams, who was the lead detective on the uh, initial case in 1990. Uh, so the white Chrysler LeBaron that was in question was found four days later. It was recovered, uh, abandoned in the hmm. parking lot of a grocery store in uh, Palm Beach Gardens. Multiple brown hairs and orange fibers were found in the trunk of the car as well as a Publix grocery bag. Back in 1990, it was one of those old, you know, the brown paper bags. Oh, yeah. It didn't really give you much oh, of that yeah. plastic option. Uh, and coincidentally, the vehicle had been linked to the Warrens business as a stolen vehicle. Oh, so oh, this no. is just you know, open a quinky shut. Dink, a quinky so, dink. Yeah, this is open yeah. And, this is like red handed on every yeah. mm-hmm. fucking possible motive. But search warrants, they yielded nothing. And the rudimentary DNA testing by the FBI of hair and fiber samples at the time was deigned inconclusive, and so no charges were ever brought against Sheila Keen or Michael Warren, uh, at least in regards to the murder. Um, what? It's just, you have that- to think, like, the first time that DNA became a real big issue was during the O.J. Simpson murder. Right. Yeah, that was 95, was it? It was, uh, 94? I think, 94, 95, so this predates that by four or five years. Oh. People just didn't put any... So they couldn't, they, there were hairs on her brush at her house and then hairs in the car and they couldn't tell But the testing, it, it just, they, they were like, we don't know. Oh, so it was basically hey, DNA testing then was a guy around, holding two you know? hairs looking at them go, yeah, they're both brown. They look good. They look brown, same length. Silky. Well, I think for hair DNA, you have to actually get the root. If you don't okay. have the root, there's oh, no, no DNA. Really? Or it's like broken DNA. Ah, so okay. if if it was a hairbrush, you might not always get I that see. root. Well, they okay. had even found orange fibers from a wig in her apartment. Okay, from then that's it. Wait, 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 wait. Wigs. But... Like I had said previously, she had shown up several years earlier in an auto parts store and had some. But she another, also said that she never bought. They a couldn't cop. match anything exactly. I know everything is. It just scre- it made me very very upset reading. Yes, all I am of very the, upset these about newspaper it. articles about this. Michael Warren. Five months after Marlene's death, the police arrested him. Uh, the scrutiny that had his business had been put under during mm. the murder investigation uh, it unearthed enough evidence to charge him with 66 felony counts How? of Whoa. fraud All yes, right. of fraud uh, including racketeering grand theft, petty theft, and odometer fraud uh, through the scheme that he was fraud. That is a real a very subsection. Specific yeah. fraud. It's like wow. he was the father from M- Matilda, that Roald Dahl book. Oh yeah, yeah. Dane DeVito's yeah. character. Exactly. Yeah. Like he's just yeah. putting sawdust and hamsters and putting those in gas tanks. <laughs> he would reset odometers so that he could Recharge set a higher right. yeah, resale yeah. And, and for, for things like that. But so, uh, What's the thing I'm thinking of? A uh, trip. Well, they also did Ferris Bueller's Day Off, remember? Oh, yeah. 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 Drive it backwards. So (laughs) he was brought up uh, uh, on all of these charges. And then in August of 1992, a jury found him guilty of 43 counts of fraud and racketeering. And he was up against a possible maximum sentence of 237 years in prison. Uh, but a judge found that prosecutors were probably being biased in, in, the, in the fact that they couldn't put together a proper trial for well, this murder charge. He also and had so less being frauds bi- in the first time. Well, yeah, you know? but why is he being charged for the murder? He wasn't. He wasn't. No one was ever charged, but they felt like that. So no one was ever charged no for this murder. No one was ever charged for this murder. You it's have still got to be kidding to this me. Day. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding. Wow. As I was saying, a, a judge uh, severely felt that uh, Warren was being treated unfairly. And so oh, he's no. just sentenced him to 20 years of probation. And this was, of what? course, what? appealed. You... And a nine-year prison sentence was mandated in um, 1994. Uh, Warren served three of those years and was released in 1997. Jeez. Uh, Sheila Keen eventually divorced her estranged husband, Richard, in 2000. And then two years later, she and Michael Warren were married in Nevada. Ooh. Okie dokie. That's crazy. But wow. I'm just saying... Never know what a clown is going to bring to your front door.